Well, praise the Lord. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Victory in the Valley. This is Pastor Kevin Ortiz, and we're so excited. We thank God for you uh, for watching today's program. This, this program is going to change your life. We have recorded this message from Faith Pleases God Church here in Harlingen, Texas. And so we are friends. We are brothers in Christ. We're your neighbors. Amen. And God is doing great things at this church. If you ever have, a t have time, please come on out on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and come visit me. I know that God has a special blessing for you. You need to come and receive the word of God. You will never be the same again. Amen. In today's message, I know it's going to be a blessing to your life. The anointing of God is upon it. I want you to receive the word of God so that your heart will be open. But understand this, that God will lift up your faith through the word of God. And then things will begin to change because you open up your heart for God to move. Amen. I pray that this, this, this message blesses your life and that things will change in your life. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you touch them. I ask that you use this message to have big impact in their life. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to heal them, protect them, and provide for them, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for stirring up their faith to receive your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Don't change that channel because my father would always say, and I say it as well, it gets gooder and gooder. Thank you for watching today's program of Victory in the Valley. Open up your Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Today we're talking about my ministry. Everybody say, my ministry. my ministry. Yes, your ministry. We're talking about your ministry. Whether you knew it or not, you have a ministry. You are in the ministry. Your ministry is just as valuable, is just as powerful as my ministry. And God has a purpose and a plan for every one of you. Amen. And so today we're talking about your ministry. And I'm going to teach you how to step into your ministry and be successful in ministry, amen? Hallelujah. I thank God for you. I, I, see, I, I see people right now that they already, they're already working on their ministry name, you know, Joe Garcia International Ministries. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know that victory is, is a gift? Amen. You don't have to fight for it. Victory is a gift. Amen. Thanks be to God who gives you the victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, in, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have victory in Jesus' name. And then the word of God says that we are, we are called to do a work in this world. That God has a plan and purpose for our life. We are called into ministry. And what we are doing is we are continuing where Jesus left off. Jesus walked in this world. He showed us the kingdom of God. He showed us what heaven is like. He showed us that heaven, it makes all things brand new. It brings restoration, healing, and freedom and deliverance. The Bible says that Jesus went about destroying all the works of the devil. People were sick because of the anointing of God that was upon Jesus, they were healed. People who were oppressed by the devil because of the anointing of God that was upon Jesus, those devils had to go. People who were dead because of the anointing of God that was upon Jesus, they had to rise from the dead. He talked and showed us the Father. He walked in love. He showed us the glory of God. And then when it was, our, when it was his time to finish the work, he went to the cross and took all our sins and our shames and our sicknesses to the cross. Laid down his life because he had the power to lay down his life and destroy everything at the cross. But then he had the power to pick it back up and rise from the dead. And now when we come to Christ, we become one with him. We surrender our life. That's our, that's our cross. We lay down our life. 
We die to who we are. We pick up his life. The Bible says we are crucified with Christ, yet we live not us, but Christ in us. Christ lives in us. It's not so you could just have a successful family. It's not so that you could have a little bit of peace and joy in your life. Thank God for all those things. But it's because God has a plan for you. He invests his, the blood, he has, he has invested the blood of Jesus Christ for you. He has invested the, the spirit of God who lives and dwells on the inside of you. You have resurrection power inside of you. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. That's why you have victory because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what we see or experience. It doesn't matter what comes out at us. Those things are temporary and those things don't have power over our God. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. And for us to say that God would invest so much in us so that we could just have a little bit better life, maybe have a better, more successful marriage, maybe be able to raise our, our children up a little better and have a little bit more money and a little bit of joy. No, 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 no. Those things are part of it. But that's not the purpose of it. It's because God has a plan for you. Jesus died on the cross so that, we, so that many sons of righteousness could rise up. The Bible says the whole earth groans in expectation, waiting for the sons of righteousness. The world is waiting for you. The world is waiting to see the Jesus in your life. Is he big? Is he strong? Is he mighty? Is he victorious? Or is he just someone that you recognize before you go to bed and when you wake up? God has a plan for you. God has a ministry that, that will change this world. God wants to use you greatly, amen? Where Jesus left off, that's where we begin. We are walking in the book of Acts. The anointing of God should be upon our life. Wherever we go, the power of God should be in demonstration. Miracles, signs, and wonders follow us wherever we go. Wherever I go, miracles, signs, and wonders, that's part of life. That's part of normalcy walking with God. Where the world is amazed by miracles, we expect miracles. Because we know the power of God that's inside of us. We know this power has, has the power to bring back the dead back to life again. We know this power has the power to multiply and bring supernatural provision. We know this power has the power to break every chain, every yoke of bondage off of people's lives and destroy all the works of the devil. That's the anointing upon our life. That's the Holy Spirit in us and upon us. And we are called to ministry. Ministry is not just for the pastor. Ministry is for everyone that declares that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, get to work. Get to work. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, God has a plan for your life. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 through 13 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. This is a person who has stepped into the call of God. If you notice the word of God says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They're thoughts. Why are they only thoughts? It's because God has this purpose and this plan for you. But you have to be obedient to step on in. 
You have to be faithful to follow the Lord. So many people are waiting for God to drag you into your ministry when all God can do is lead you. The Bible says those that follow the Holy Spirit are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit is not leading you just to church. The Holy Spirit is leading you to become the church. There are people that are hurting, that are crying out to God and are waiting for you to step into your call. To step into your ministry. To destroy the works of the devil off their life because the greater one's on the inside of you. The spirit of victory is on the inside of you. Not just for yourself, but for others as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you, I know how to cast out devils. I learned how to cast out the devil off my life. Now I know how to cast out devils off everybody else's life. Amen. Amen. I'm more than a conqueror. Not just for myself, not victory for myself, but victory for you. Victory for the nations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're more than a conqueror. Tell your neighbor, I'm more than a conqueror. And so God has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. He doesn't change his mind. He's just waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He keeps on speaking to you. He keeps on leading you. He keeps on directing you. And he's waiting for you to say, yes, Lord, use me. To step out in faith and begin to believe God for the supernatural. I'm not asking you to become a holy preacher. I'm not asking you to, to learn famous prayers. To tell you the truth, my prayers are, are the most simplest prayers. When you get a religious man up there, they bring out three pages full of prayers. You know, I, I think I'm one of the worst if you ask to do a public prayer. They invite you, Pastor Kevin, will you do a public prayer? The person before me will, will talk ten minutes and give a, a great, holy you know, using words that, you, you know, you need to take out a, a dictionary just to follow along. Very, very religious, very, very righteous. Using all these these and thous and those and, and whosoevers. And then when I go up there, God help us. If you're expecting like some really long, righteous, religious prayer, that's not me. I just want the power of God. Amen. And I'm trusting in the Lord. Amen. And I'm speaking from my heart. Praise God. But we step into that ministry following God because God wants to use every single one of us. And you might say, well, pastor, I'm, get, I, I'm too young to be used by God. No, don't listen to this. Don't believe the lie of the devil. Do not give the devil not one day, not one year of your life serving the world and serving the wickedness of this world, serving the devil. No, youth, youth, I want to tell you, you're going to serve the Lord all the days of your life. From your youth, you shall be a great man and woman of God. From your youth, you shall see miracles and signs and wonders. I can't tell you how many people I've seen in the youth that have caught hold of God and they would run to the streets and start laying hands on everything that was sick just to see the power of God flow and they would see miracles and signs and wonders everywhere they went. You can't tell me that you have to be a certain age to serve God. You just have to be willing to be used by God. And you might be getting a little older in your age. God still can use you. Some of the greatest ministries I know, they started in their old age. Because God knows how to renew your youth and give strength to those, those bones, amen, and life to your, to, to, to your body, amen. Say this after me. I will not die till I complete my ministry. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so God has a plan, God has a purpose, God has a ministry for you, amen? Verse 64 of Isaiah, I'm sorry, Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, verse 8. says, but now, O Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, you are the potter, and all we are the work of your hand. God is shaping us. He's molding us. 
He's forming us so that he could pour out his anointing upon us and use us. Understand this. We don't know how the power of God operates. We just know that it works. We just have faith that God is going to do something. We have faith when the word of God says that the believer will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So we start going around touching people who are sick because we believe, we believe, we believe. I, I dare you. I dare you to show up at the hospital. Just go visit room after room. How you doing? God bless you. Hey, how you doing? Can we talk a little bit? Good to see you. God bless you. Good to see you. All right. You do good, okay? Amen. Amen. What are you doing? You're operating the word of God. You're stepping into your ministry. And understand this, when you step into your ministry, that's when you will grow to another level in your walk with God. That's when you get out of the normal into the extraordinary. That's where you stop being a normal Christian who is really good because your, 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 your behind fits real comfortable in the chair on Sunday mornings. Because that's all you've been doing is sitting in the chair on Sunday mornings. But you start having an anointing and a power and a strength and a zeal to see the world change. And you start going out and God begins to give you vision and dreams and an anointings and wisdom and knowledge. The gifts of the Holy Spirit come upon you. You start walking down the street and the gift of discernment comes upon you. God will show you someone and say, that person is being oppressed by the devil. And you can go right to that person in the complete strength and complete confidence because you know that you heard from God. So that when you speak to that person, you can tell them exactly what devil's been messing with them and come against it in the name of Jesus and set them free because the anointing of God's upon your life. The gifts come. They come upon you. They anoint, the anointing comes upon you. The gifts of the Holy Spirit come upon you. And the Bible says it's for the profit of all. When a person is set free from the, the, the chains of the devil, they'll come running to the Christ. When a person gets healed by the power of the Holy Spirit, they come running to Christ. When a person receives wisdom and knowledge through your life because God, because the Holy Spirit has spoken to you, they'll come running to Christ. So we operate in the power. We operate in the anointing. We operate in the call that God has for us. And this anointing is not just for Pastor Kevin. This anointing is for every person that can believe in the power of Jesus Christ. We step into the book of Acts. And because you step into your ministry, because you say, God, use me, and you begin to cry out to God, God, will you please use me? God will begin to give you the secret of your ministry. Because your ministry is a secret. Because God does not want you to step into it until your heart is ready for it. So he holds it. He holds it. The reason why he holds it, because if he told you what he was going to do in your life, you'd go running. You would take off. You'd be so, you'd be thinking, no, there's no way. There's no way. If God told me that he was going to send me to the places that I've gone, I would have taken off running a long time ago. I would never have believed it. But what God does, he just he waits till the heart is ready. And when the heart is ready, then he takes you. Then he takes you and he positions you. And then he moves through your life. He speaks to you in the midnight hour. You get to understand and have a, a close, a close, intimate relationship with God. So intimate that you know that there's nothing to fear. You know without a shadow of doubt that you're walking in the glory of God. And not only you know, but the world recognizes it. People start running to you and chasing you down, not because you look different, but because they see Jesus in your life. And they know you've got a relationship with God so that they know they have this faith that if you pray for them, they will receive. What happened? You stepped into your ministry. You're lifting up the name of Jesus. The kingdom of God is expanding. The glory of God is being revealed. People's hearts are turned to God. Revival begins to take place because you chose to step out and to be used by God. Amen. Your ministry is a fruit of your relationship with Jesus. Because you have a relationship with Jesus, the ministry of God will begin to flow through your life. If you have a relationship with Christ, you should be walking in the ministry. Ministry is the most beautiful thing. People, you know, in this world, they complain. 
I hear preachers and, and pastors that they start complaining about, oh, ministry is tough. There's so many problems. There's so many situations. I, I want to smack them across the head. This is the easiest life I could ever imagine. It is the most easiest life I could ever imagine. I mean, think about this. My whole answer is Christ. So whenever I have a problem, Jesus! You know why? Because he put me in this situation, so he's going to deliver me from this situation. It's easy. It's fun. It's fun. I get phone calls. I mean, uh, you know, it's not just, just, you know, come visit the hospital phone calls. I get phone calls. Pastor, uh, my, my, my uncle is possessed by a devil, is running around trying to hurt everything. Pastor, can you come? And there I am in my car, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit uh, ambulance. I, I got a siren. It's praise and worship. I just crank it up. Show up. Amen. Amen. I go, I go into that place. I look and I see that, that person acting, acting so weird because the enemy is upon his life. And there's times I'll get ready to go over there and then the Spirit of God will, will say, stop, 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 stop. Don't pray yet. Don't pray yet. And I'll stop and I'll be listening to the Holy Spirit because, hey, I'm here following him. I'm just, I'm listening to the, to, the, to the heavenly CB. <laughs> what do you want me to do, commander? <laughs> Tell me what to do, chief Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm listening, I'm listening. And then God will stop me and say, the problem's not him, the problem's his wife. <laughs> and then it gets juicy. I mean, I'm in like this Jerry Springer episode. It's amazing. <laughs> and God starts showing me things of unforgiveness. And, and, and I, you know, there's times that God will even show me witchcraft that was done in the home. And next thing you know, that wife is confessing that she did some sort of witchcraft against her, her husband because she got angry and he did something in the past. And, and it becomes a whole mess. And what, what's happening? We're just breaking chains. We're breaking chains. We're breaking chains. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no need to be afraid of the devil when you got the greater, the greater one on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so we have this incredible ministry that God has waiting for you. And you might say, well, pastor, I don't know how to do that. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. We're just listening to the Holy Ghost. And he will lead you. If you'll step in, tell your neighbor, step in. Amen. Every one of you are called into the ministry. Let me, let me share something with you. Bert, are you here? Are you in the back? Stand up, Bert, if you're directing right now. Where, where are you, Bert? Oh, there you are. Everybody look at Bert. Say hi, Bert. Hi, Bert. Amen. Bert is so faithful in the media ministry. He heads it up. He handles the television production. Bert is not on salary or staff. Matter of fact, I don't even know how Bert got there, but he got there. <laughs> and so he, every, every service, he's, he's faithful. You have to understand, that was a call that God put upon his life to be in that ministry. Bert's wife has not had, does not have permission to come on over to the United States yet. Bert lives in Mexico. And he, tra he travels every, almost every day to just come to church. Even when we're not doing anything, Bert is here working for the Lord. And so Bert has stepped into the media ministry because right now his wife is watching the TV program in Mexico. And she's enjoying church. She's part of this fellowship. She's enjoying service just as much as you're enjoying service. She receives the anointing of God upon her life when we pray, just like you all receive the anointing of God when we pray. Her and her family are over there. Bert and his family are in Mexico. So when Bert runs the camera, he is serving his family as he runs that camera. And that ministry is not something that, you could, you, that, that he could be hired to do. It's something that's birthed inside of him. He carries it. It's holy. It's righteous. And because it's holy and it's righteous, whoever watches that TV program is able to receive the power of God because of the heart that's in him. He's not a hireling. He's walking in his call. 
And Burr will tell you, I'm the most blessed man. I'm the most prosperous man. I'm the most blessed man. Wherever I go, I just see the hand of God upon my life. God uses them, miracles, signs, and wonders. People see the glory of God upon him's life. He gets invited to go preach at churches across this Rio Grande Valley. And he's never stood at this pulpit to preach. Well, pastor, how can he be preaching at other churches if he's not even preaching here? He is preaching. That anointing that he's, he's carrying for the medias. Trust me, it's not just preaching here in Harlingen, Texas. It's preaching to the nations. Amen. He stepped into his ministry. His relationship with God has gotten stronger because he stepped into his ministry. And, and guess what? I can't stop him. He chases me down. Pastor, what are we going to do about television? I got this idea. Can we meet? I'm like, well, Bert, come on. Give me a minute. I'm, I need to sleep a little bit. <laughs> Amen. But it's a call upon his life. God spoke to us and told us that we are supposed to raise up a thousand disciples. The word of God says that we are supposed to go out to and make disciples of all nations. Have you been discipled? Have you been taught the ways of the Lord? Have you been led by the Holy Ghost as you have been instructed by someone who's been taught of how to live for God. We have people that want to walk with you. We have people that are great men and women of God that want to pray over your life and that they want to take on the responsibility of seeing you grow in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Today is the day to sign up. Today is the day to become part of this discipleship program. Become part of this army that we're raising up to serve the Lord. This is a daily discipleship program that you will walk with our spiritual trainers and you will experience the goodness of God. Come by faith, pleases God church, and we will, we will match you up with somebody who will, will encourage you, who will walk with you, who will pray over your life and believe God for the goodness of God for you, for you and your family. You need to become a disciple. Come by faith, pleases God church, or call 956-412-5600 and say, I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Thank you guys for watching today's program, and thank you for signing up to become a disciple today. It's a free ministry just for you. God bless you, and we'll see you in a, in a short while here at church worshiping the Lord with us. God bless you. We love you. God bless. Praise the Lord. I hope this word really touched you and blessed your life. The word of God is so powerful. We thank God for that he's made available this airtime so that we can share his love with you, share the word of God. Listen, we are here, Faith Pleases God Church, and we're here for you. We love you guys. We got a program that we, we've established that God, that's according to the word of God on raising up disciples. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Has anybody walked with you and prayed with you and encouraged you in the ways of the Lord? Well, we want to do that for you. I want to encourage you guys to come on out to Faith Pleases God Church. We're here in Harlingen, Texas. We have people that will pray with you and will walk with you and teach you the basics of Christianity. There's no reason you should waste another year or another moment of living your life in the world when God has such a great life for you. We bless you. We love you. Come on out to Faith Pleases God Church. Join our discipleship program. You will be changed and you'll be transformed for the glory of God. Thank you for watching Victory in the Valley. We love you. We'll see you next time. God bless.